So, so with the big solar co-op model, you know, you can look for um, large arrays. I, I think we were most of you at the meeting last week when uh, Peter Preble was here doing a presentation on, on Saskatoon. So, you know, you can look for these large um, groups so that would enable you to put a large array on there. Like I think he has 90 megawatts and 85 megawatts. And that has the potential, people want to buy into that model, downstream it's going to be giving you actual dividends. So it's not like you're just throwing your money away on some sort of ideological model. There is some benefit to it long term. Well, that, that's where the renters would come in. It's, it's a transportable yeah, benefit. Right. It doesn't matter where they live. Yeah, they right. That benefit is it. Yeah. Um, and the other thing, yeah, the other thing, uh, Tamla, just what you said, that was a good point about your colleague there. Um, in talking with April, who's going to do our co talks and co-ops, she is just, she was flabbergasted that we're entertaining the idea of a co-op because she said there hasn't been a co-op made in like nine years or something. Like it, it's like, it's just, it, 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 it just hasn't been really done even under since before this government. So she was saying, and I thought it was a real good point because, um, you know, your neighbor and these other, and those of us who are coming in through the economic and private model, there's, I mean, a big part of the cooperative model is education. So we're actually providing an opportunity to educate even our members who are coming here and being like, what's a co-op? How does that work? You know, I came here because I'm interested in the getting a sweet deal on my panels, but all of a sudden I'm learning about this co-op and like, whoa, like this is, like that's the way I kind of see it is like, we're almost like, evangelizing <laughs> like the the uh, the private people who are coming in and being like there's another way we can do this that has benefits in in a in a way bigger way you know um, uh, anyways that's that's some of the way that I I feel like I've been influenced so far just by attending the meetings like oh I see economic benefit this would be great to put on a house and now that I've been hearing about what Saskatoon is doing and and some of the stuff that April can bring forth, I'm, I'm really excited about being a part of a larger scale model, you know? So um, I guess the answer to your friend is, yes, it's a, just basically a group buying thing, but with the goal of we're looking at a bigger model in the end, and we're hoping people will be a part of that, you know? Yeah, it's, it's like even to get our government, uh, you know, it, it, our, we were, we're behind everybody else in terms of yeah. Uh, everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. that's the other one. Have to be. Like the, the value of it, you know, they, we know that SAS power is going to increase or uh, the cost of electricity going up, I think they said 5% a year. So, you know, like that's 20% in four years. And so the more the price of electricity goes up, the greater value of solar energy is. Yeah. And there's a greater payback you're going to get. But I mean, you can get, you know, you can still go out there and get good deals by just talking to individual solar providers and installers and stuff. So that's, I guess that's what I see. So that's your only objective of joining the solar co-op. You know, you probably are going to be able to go out there and get a good deal on your own. But, but the, um, even SAS Power realizes that solar energy is growing Way more, way faster than they dreamed of like five years ago. Five years ago, they didn't even want to talk about solar. You know, like they just saw it, they see it as sort of competition to their They would system. say it's not a utility grade uh, investment, basically. Yeah. They, they even told me it wasn't suitable in the Northern Hemisphere, <laughs> which is like patently absurd. Uh, you said there weren't many co ops in Saskatchewan formed? In the last. Nine years. That, well, nine, eight years ago, or nine years ago in 2008, Regina Car Share Co-op formed. Yeah, about five years ago, Saskatoon Car Share Co-op formed. Okay. But then that might be the last two, latest yeah. two in the she, province. April has her ear to the ground on that, and she said it's been very few. Interesting. I didn't know I was like yeah. part of the second last. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I know from like a personal perspective, you know, I wanted to do it primarily for my own property, the group buy initiative, but I know that something like a large scale co-op, it's not going to get going unless you've got people that are willing to invest some time and, and you know, be a volunteer. And so, you know, looking at the selection committee for this and then taking that data and then helping the large scale co-op, 
that's my way of sort of giving back and being involved in that, right. even though I still want to be part of the group. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. 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 So, yeah. You can be part of both. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's not either work. And it, like to me, the biggest thing is that I don't know what the structure is of. Like, do you get dividends out of the co-op, or like, yeah. what, how does that whole thing work? That is what we're hoping April is going to touch more on in the next it, presentation. It, well, in Saskatoon, they have two, two shares of, uh, you know, preferred share, I forget which is which, which basically the membership fee is $50, and that doesn't give you any, any share, share. Any dividends. Yeah, yeah, common share, that's right. And that just basically gives you a membership. Um, and, it, and then one share, which is a preferred share, is $950. And that basically pays for one panel, one installed panel on the roof anywhere. So, and they, the intent is that after a period of time, you start drawing, drawing revenue from it. So it basically has to cover its costs up front. And once you cover the cost, the net benefit goes back to the co-op and the shareholders. I'm just curious on the, on the big, big picture. I keep hearing all the, you get a yak about like big infrastructure projects that the, the federal government's putting out. It sounds like an infrastructure thing to me. Yeah, but I know I looked into some of that funding and even with solar energy and they said solar co-ops and solar installation aren't enough of an innovation. So, yeah, I mean, unless you came up with something really, um, I don't know, I don't know what innovation would be. Yeah. Where I think you're going to see it take off is when SAS Power has their next round of uh, what they call small power producers, uh, because they sold out essentially June or July. When they do that next round of it, I mean, who, who knows? I mean, that, that could be something that our large scale co-op, co We've got enough funds together, great, let's go uh, get some egg field space and have a big enough pool to go do an array. Yeah. And then be one of those power producers selling it to SAS Power. I mean, that's, that's potentially where this could go down the road, and then you use the dividends for that and it you know, grows from there. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you know, that's they're still not going to announce anything like that, I think, for some time. And, and then, you know, by that time we'll have, you know, structure in place, and hopefully we'll help with that. Yeah. Well, I think the biggest risk in the group, though, is if SAS Power decides to get rid of the whole net meter, right? Yeah. So if they get rid of that, then you yeah. now you're producing power, but you need a battery. Like no, the, the, power, the SAS Power producer, it's a contract where it's like a feed-in tariff on the strike. But if they but if they don't, let's say they don't offer it, or for the, the average Joe, they don't do the net metering anymore. I mean, that's mm. the biggest yeah. threat. So yeah. I, I think that's just an idle threat, though, because they've been extending the deadline every year. Right. right, and that's but, why the group buy model works. It's it's done in batches. You know, great the program got renewed. Okay, let's let's look at organizing the next batch. Well, I think the biggest like I I'm a finance guy. I, I look at the return on investment, right? And so, sort of what Peter was talking about in the last meeting, a 16 year payback, assuming a five percent annual increase, like. That's crazy in my opinion. Yeah, like a five percent yeah, growth. Like every, if you can return, if you can get a return of five percent annually in any investment, you're doing pretty good, right? So you're banking on SAS Power jacking your power price five percent every year, That's and your payback is sixteen years on a twenty-five year life product. And you're talking like, after tax benefit. Like it's actually huge. Your net five percent. You pay that after tax. So what is that? Eight and a half, really? You know what I'm saying? I'm agreeing with you. Well, it is a very light. I, I haven't crunched numbers, but I mean, but just invert the gap, right? Yeah, he's got a he's got a hockey stick projection. But what the rates are going up, you're saying? Yeah. Different. Well, that's that's the heroic assumption, right? You need yeah. that to happen to pay back over six. Years. And the economic, and I mean, I looked at SAS, the solar co-op in Saskatoon a couple of years ago, and the economics weren't there for me right. either. Right. I'd like to think our selection committee here yeah. um, might have that as a maybe slightly different criteria for the group buy, at least the upfront. Sure. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, and that was their pricing. They're going off of stuff three years ago. Uh, I mean, they were more doing it for demonstration projects. You know, I, I think the consensus, at least initially, and some of the stats we'll, we'll get out of the group, will we'll show where we're going. But I think it's a lot more business focused in terms of where the pricing is, at least for the group buy, because people are taking their own money and throwing it on their own roofs, sure. right? So I mean, those numbers well, have to be much better on both sides. On both sides, yeah. Those numbers have to be much better than I think what Saskatoon and Milwaukee was doing. Yeah, because there's uh, no point in buying, you know. $10,000 yeah. worth of a prep share in the Saskatoon Co-op, and you know maybe you get a $100 dividend in 10 years. There's also, 
in the, the registered <laughs> client <laughs> side of it. There's also a risk that registered client that you spoke of. You said it's great you can put the RSP registered that way. There's risk to that too. That I would well, you're talking about private space for a very low yeah. Or zero year yeah. or yeah. liquidity for an estate as well. Yeah. So that, that was a red flag to me. Yeah, there's just a lot of administrative, like that's, you know, that's a whole other, you know, you, now you're talking about regular joining, uh, registering with a regular, you know, a whole bunch of other well, they already yeah. costs yeah. that you don't even have. Well, and, and, like sustainability of the co op is key, right? Yeah. Like, but, um, Ontario has a lot of these co ops because they have a better, you know, well, they have a feed-in yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it's but, the rates are better. Yeah, so Subsidy. I guess it still comes down to so. if, if we have a uh, Saskatoon co-op and our co-op, if we have multiple voices to put in information into the media and act as a lobby against government not per, not paying the right rates for us then i see like that sure like you're never going to get back your thousand dollars necessarily in money but maybe we'll get it back in uh, ability to then install on our own and make money that way or like you can get it back another way we're paying for the organization to advocate on our behalf yeah. well i think that sort of goes back to what i was saying well, we need sort of a mission and a vision statement it's like you know what's what's the light in the dark that's you know focusing right. like what are we focused on right. you know yeah. and then from there you can sort of filter out noise as to that's that's nice, but it's not our focus. Well, and then even just looking at South Power, all of their their traditional sources of energy are, are you know slowly eroding. I mean, we know they rely on like hydropower. You know, they rely on 